Hi everybody, it's me, Raphael from Orthodox Review, the most uneducated educational program on the internet today. My new meds make me very sleepy, but we're going to get through this with our usual oblong. So that being said, we're going to have a sip of coffee and charge this sucker up. Welcome back, everybody, to Orthodox Review, the most uneducated educational blah, 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 educational program on the internet today. Ha, 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 I am your host, the guy with one and a half thumbs, and I'm so very, very pleased to have you today here in the camper with me. Uh, my apologies right out for the shaky cam. Keep trying to brace it against the wall, and it just keeps wiggling out of its way because I'm, I'm a leg shaker. Anyway, uh, before we get into the show proper, the usual... Check the links below for ways to support the show, and a huge th shout out and thank you uh, to everyone who has helped me uh, from the past until now. Um, Patreons, channel members, donors. Um, and I, I, I'd like to mention real quick uh, Pete B, Orthodox Outcast, Orthodox Insights, and David DeYoung for their financial and material support in providing uh, materials for the show, uh, food, money. Uh, this camera, the computer I used to edit it with, the old camera, uh, all that stuff. So th thank you. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, I was asked in the comments of the previous video if I would explain some basic church etiquette. And of course, I, of course I will. Uh, I've wanted to do it anyway, and uh, that one comment inspired me to just do this. So thank you uh, for, for putting that out there. Now... There are a lot of resources out there with a lot of variation uh, in how we behave in church. And so instead of going through all of them and nitpicking them apart, what we're going to do here today is go over some universally known basics, okay? We're not going to deep dive into anything. Because as with all these 101 videos, this is this is geared more towards people that are thinking of visiting a church for the first time, or they're new uh, to the faith. You know, they're they're maybe an inquirer or a catechumen, or maybe just someone who wants to brush up. So we're going to go through some very basic things. We're going to comment on a few of them and answer a few questions that have come in in the interim between deciding to do the video, announcing the video. And today, so uh, the very first thing, and uh, and I will go a little more in depth into this. Uh, when we are approaching the building itself, we get up to the front door. It's always appropriate to make the sign of the cross, not to bow or make a prostration outside or whatever. Just make the cross, honor the entrance into the entrance. Um, and as a side note, when I was living at the monastery, it was it was taught to us that any time we pass by a church. You should always make the sign of the cross. You know, you're, you're passing by God's holy tabernacle, so it's, it's a good thing. Now, when we get into the church, in some churches, they will have icons for veneration before you get into the nave. Uh, you know, and you'll have like the candles there and everything. Uh, you see this, or I have seen this, in Greek churches. And so it's appropriate to make your venerations there as we covered in Icon Veneration 101, with the two bows, adoration, and a third bow. And then, you know, light your candles and whatnot. And then you would enter into the nave and then make your three bows, which we're going to talk about in a second. When you're venerating the icons, when they are outside the nave, the order in which they are venerated may differ. Okay? Typically, First and foremost, you venerate Christ, and then his mother, and then the patron of the church that is there. Uh, sometimes this requires a person to bounce back and forth depending on placement, but that is the appropriate and, and dare I say, correct way to venerate the icons in order. I will say, however, in the Slavic usage, it's a little different. Um, so let's say we're, 
we're not in a Greek church. Now we're in a Slavic church or possibly uh, an Antiochian church, whatever. In that case, you enter the church. You make three vows. Now, in the instructions given, say, in the Jordanville prayer book, uh, there's something called the seven bow beginning. You'll also find this in uh, the Old Rite prayer book. Now, this is a great and pious thing, but common practice is to make uh, three bows, and on certain days, prostrations upon entering the church proper. Sign of the cross, bow. God be merciful to me, a sinner. Sign of the cross, bow. Thou hast created me, O Lord, have mercy on me. Third cross and a bow. I have sinned immeasurably, Lord, have mercy on me, and forgive me, a sinner. That's the way that I was taught back in the day. Uh, other variations would be just, you know, God have mercy on me, a sinner, three times. But the idea is not to just sloppily make a cross and bow quick, blah, 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 blah. oh, God have mercy on me. <laughs> Take the time, and it's only a moment. Take the time to make a proper cross and bow. Okay? And that goes with everything. Sloppy, quick, unthoughtful crosses. The devil loves this. And many, 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 many modern saints have said as much. Okay, so we have come into the church. Um, we have made our bows. And in the Slavic and sometimes Antiochian usage, the first icon you come upon is the patron of the temple. So instead of doing Christ, Mother of God, patron, it's patron, Christ, Mother of God. That's just kind of the way it is. That's, that, that's how it is. And so you go and venerate according to what we've previous stated, previously stated. With one thing of note, when we go from one side to the other and we pass by the altar, so at the center of the doors, it is appropriate to stop, face the doors, and make one cross. Bow and honor the fact that Christ's flesh and blood is on that day. We're going around, we're venerating icons. What about candles? Why do we light candles? Candles represent our prayer and nothing more. We're probably more, actually. But, you know, if, if you grab some candles, you know, say a prayer, you light the candle, you put it in there. I know, personally, I, I especially like to light a candle at the icon of the Theotokos and, and pray for all the people suffering from cancer because that's the icon we have in our church. It is the uh, Pontanasa, which uh, we've covered and actually prayed on the show. Um, then you'll have what's called the Panakidric, which is usually a a spot off to the side with the, with the crucifix on it, not just a cross, but the crucifix, uh, where we pray for the repose of the departed. And uh, that list keeps getting longer. <laughs> but yes, we, we light a candle. We pray, God have mercy on the souls of thy servants. You know, mom, dad, whatever. And make their memory to be eternal. Put the candle in, the sign of the cross. I will mention that we usually venerate the same way there that we do at the icons. Now, let's talk about appropriate attire. And I will quote... Uh, a comment that we got on that short recently. Tyler Gabriel Music Things says, uh, God bless you, brother. I'm hoping that you might address the etiquette of wearing an inflatable sumo suit to church or perhaps a freely face paint seeking clarification. Church canons are on clear on these. To which I responded, powdered wigs, 3D printed cosplay masks, and furries will also be addressed. You know, I thought if I set this thing for 80, we'd be okay. Two seconds. So, appropriate church attire. Here, come here for a second. Let me talk to you. Church is not a fashion show, okay? We would love to wear things to show them off for whatever reason. You know, you got that cool new Death to the World shirt. It's not always proper. To, to wear clothing like that. Although I will say, in some climates, things that you wouldn't necessarily think are proper or acceptable actually kind of are, depending on where you are. Now, this, this is where we're going to stray slightly into opinion. Obviously, you could wear an inflatable sumo suit to church. I wouldn't recommend it. It's disrespectful. 
someone might ask you to leave out of respect. Ace Freely makeup, again, uh, there is nothing that says we can't wear face paint to church, um, but it would be a distraction and be considered disrespectful, so I wouldn't recommend it. I mentioned powdered wigs, 3D printed masks, cosplay masks, and um, and furries. And oddly enough, uh, masks are right out. Okay, we went through this with the freaking coof. Okay, we don't conceal our faces in church. There's no reason to. Uh, powdered wigs. Honestly, I'm in favor of bringing them back. Wigs are not an issue, okay? Uh, but masks are. Furries, on the other hand, again, fall under the category of not necessarily wrong, but disrespectful. Especially if you're wearing a mask. So let's, let's not wear this stuff to church. Why am I treating this seriously? Well, because it actually does sort of inform a, kind of a common sense thing when it comes to what we wear to church. Let's face it, in a perfect world, we'd all be wearing beautiful suits and dresses and be prim and proper, but that's not always the case. Some people are poor and can't afford those things. Uh, some people live in subtropical climates and just, you know, <laughs> would die of dehydration. Depends on your physiology. And, and someone, someone commented, no shorts. And I was like, well, no, but yes. Um, and the thing about shorts is, down here in the South, some people, they, they can get away with wearing pants. Um, primarily because there are pants that are made for climates like these that are, don't make you feel like you want to die. Some of us can't afford those pants, and so we will wear shorts. If you are in, in, in an area, all right, in a region, maybe subtropical or tropical region, and the local community seems to be okay with shorts, you know, just make sure they're clean and tidy. I Like, I wouldn't wear my cut-off cat print shorts to church. You know, I have got plain color, lightweight shorts that, you know, I'll wear to church. Uh, when it comes to our shirts, uh, men, um, try to steer away from uh, graphic tees. Um, if, 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 like, if you're at a spot where that's all you've got, fine. Glory to God. Uh, cheap uh, short sleeve button downs are, are, you know, your local Goodwill or Walmart panhandle a few bucks, you could probably get the hook up there. And it has been said that, oh, long sleeves, wear long sleeves. I've, I've heard some priests say, and if that's what they want at their church, that's what they want at their church, and that's fine. Again, don't go against local tradition. You know, see what's there and act accordingly. But always do it in reverence and with respect, especially uh, to to honor and respect not only God but the people around you. Um, I was told not to make this comment, but I have to make it anyway. Um, women, you know, we're all in the same boat when it comes to dealing with climate and what's at our uh, disposal. So it's the same thing, you know. It's, Wear something that goes down to the knees at least. Same with the men's with the shorts. Um, you know, a proper top. Um, head coverings optional. I, I'm not getting into head coverings because again, that's something that varies from place to place. Of course, traditionally, head coverings from the women for the women for for many good theological reasons has fallen out of use in this place or that. So, ladies, that's between you and the community and the priest. Um, I will say it is inappropriate to show uh, cleavage, um, to show off, to show off anything. Men and women both. Like men, if you're going into church with a shirt two sizes too small to show off your pump, I would say that's highly inappropriate. But that's my opinion. Again, always go to your priest about this stuff. All right, that's enough about clothing, uh, a proper uh, attire. Now, uh, let's talk about standing in church, where to stand, when to stand, if to stand. Our tradition in the Orthodox Church is that we stand, all right, unless it's a moment where, you know, we have to make a bow or a prostration. Standing is the proper posture for prayer. Now, that being said, if you are infirm, if you're old, if for some reason, 
for whatever physical reason you can't stand through the whole service, it's okay. You can sit if you need to. But if you can't stand, please do. In some churches I've seen where the priest will be like, all right, sit down, sit down. Usually during the uh, sermon in some places. Um, but uh, I've, I've been to a couple churches where, like during the antiphons, the priest is like, yeah, sit down. Um, whether that's appropriate or not, that's not for me to say. Uh, you may be in a church like that. You may not. I'm just saying. Receiving the body and blood. So you're chrismated, you're baptized, you're chrismated, you're an Orthodox Christian. How do I receive the body and blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ correctly? Um, chances are your priest has told you. But for the sake of the people that aren't there yet, I will relay to you the tradition I have received. We go up, we're in line, we make the sign of the cross, we cross our arms. Or in my case, I hobble with the cane on this one and put my hand on my heart. But typically, we cross our arms. Make the sign of the cross, we receive, venerate, three crosses. turn and bow and then you're on your way and on your way uh, in the Slavic tradition you will receive some Antideron good for you a little wine but what's also good is that you can give this to people that are there that cannot or aren't receiving communion as a blessing it's blessed bread um, one of the great joys that I personally have is giving this to visitors being like here you know you're so, um, typically in the Greek tradition, uh, you receive it at the end of the liturgy uh, after the priest's blessing. Um, and he will hand it to you. you kiss, kiss, you know, kiss the blessing hand. And that brings us to receiving a blessing. Now, uh, a priest should never assume a blessing. Uh, and I was told in no uncertain terms by numerous uh, priests, um, both in the world and in monastery. When we ask for a blessing, right hand here, left hand here, Father bless. And he will make the sign of the cross and we take his hand and we kiss it because we're venerating the hand that bestows the blessing. Father bless. If they just slap their hand down and be like, yeah, kiss it. That's... Mm inappropriate and incorrect. So uh, we've gone over receiving the blessing, the sharing of the Antideron. Days of prostrations. Um, of course the only day we never ever ever make a prostration is Sunday. It is appropriate on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays when entering the church to make three prostrations instead of the three vows. Okay. Uh, there are moments during the services when people make prostrations, whether prescribed by the church or otherwise. My, my advice to you is to just look at what people around you are doing and do that. Um, this is definitely an area where I could nitpick certain traditions and go into the canons and whatnot, but when it comes down to it, just, you know, observe and repeat. Usually at the Our Father or uh, It Is Truly Meet. And, and you will notice if the more uh, services you attend, uh, matins and vespers, y you'll see more, especially during weekday services, um, where, where it's appropriate to make these movements. So uh, I think that covers just about everything. Um, how to dress, where to stand. Oh, and standing traditionally. And you'll only find this in a few places, but traditionally, men stand on one side before the icon of Christ, and the women stand on the other side before the icon of the Theotokos. There are very, very few places I've seen that still keep this tradition. Uh, the monastery is one of them, though, because it's a monastery, and that's, you know, if there's one place where things are done traditionally, it should be the monastery. So, uh, anyway, um, that's it. I, I hope that was... 
a nice little crash course for everyone. I will say that there are uh, further instructions in uh, both the Jordanville and the Old Wright book, and those are the most severe instructions. Those are those are the instructions you find at like hardcore monasteries. So if you read those, like don't think that you need to be held to that standard. Um, you are, you know, follow local tradition. Um, if you think local tradition is wrong, talk to your priest about that because that's not that's not something we argue about here. Um, we all have our opinions, we all have our views, and that's just it is what it is. So. Uh, yeah, that's it. Sally Forth. Uh, and on behalf of Patches the Murder Kitten, who's probably out murdering as we speak, and myself, thank you again for tuning in and supporting the show and watching and liking and sharing and subscribing and just being the most awesome audience ever and leaving the coolest comments ever. I love you. I dig you. I think I get you. You get me. But anyway, yeah, on behalf of us both, uh, don't forget to go to church Say your prayers, and remember, God, uh, I love you to bits and pieces. No shit, for real, for real, no cap.